This meeting is being recorded. So welcome everyone to um, this postgraduate session for law and criminology. If you have any specific questions, please pop it in your chat, in the chat here, and Ian and Idana will be more than happy to assist you with any of the questions that you have. If you didn't get a chance to answer, uh, get your questions answered here, we have a live Q&A session from 6 to 7 p.m. And there will be an academic member of staff available to also answer any of the questions that you may have. And just to let everyone know that the taught master scholarships are open for applications. They were closed on the 30th of June. They are open across all disciplines across universities and they were 2000 euro each. So uh, don't forget to apply to the taught master scholarships as well. And we have quite a few of them on offer. Thank you. So I'll hand over to Idana now. Thanks, Roxanne. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to this webinar. Um, so I thought I would just put up a quick agenda uh, and then we can introduce everybody. So I'll just share my screen. Um, Roxanne, that's so you can see that. Perfect. Okay. I can see your screen. Perfect. Okay, so um, this is the School of Law and Criminology talk. So we're going to today we're going to talk about um, LLM programs, the MA program, and the postgraduate diploma programs for a 2022-2023 intake. So in terms of the agenda. We don't have long today, um, so we're going to sort of go through, but we, and we have quite a lot to cover. So I'm going to look at the LLM and postgraduate diploma programs. Um, Dr. Ian Marder, who's on your screen, they're waving. Um, Ian will be looking at the MA and related postgraduate diploma programs. Then we're going to have a really short interview with a past LLM student, so Gavin, who's also on your screen. And then a similar sort of discussion with a past MA student, Maria. Um, we'll then finish off with a short Q&A, but as Roxanne said, if you don't get, if we don't get to answer your question or if something comes up and you think, oh, that's a really great question, I should have asked it, there's always the Q&A opportunity later on. Okay, so as I said, I will start with the LLM programs um, and the related postgraduate diploma programs. So in the department or in the School of Law and Criminology, um, we have a wide range of LLM and then related postgraduate diploma programs. So the first is the LLM in Global Legal Studies. You can do that on a full time or a part time basis. The Global Legal Studies program is really an opportunity for you to basically develop your own masters. You have lots and lots of optionality. There are very few um, compulsory courses. So you can sort of choose, you know, maybe you want to do more international human rights type subjects, or you might want to do more business focused subjects. It's up to you to create your masters with the Global Legal Studies program. So that's really the sort of the most wide ranging of the programs. Then we have the International Justice LLM, again, full-time or part-time. And that's a little bit more focused on international law, public international law, human rights. So you can do subjects like international humanitarian law, um, international human rights, European human rights, um, and the rights of minorities. So it's, it's a much more focused program, but still there's lots of choice. Um, it's for people who are maybe considering going down the NGO route, a little bit more focused on the human rights aspects of law. Then we have our LLM in international business law, um, again, full-time or part-time. And that will focus, as it says in the name, on the more business sort of commercial type subjects. So we have things like Islamic finance law, capital markets law, WTO law, um, funds law, which is taught by a law firm. Um, so that's very much for people who are interested in the sort of the business aspect of things, potentially considering going down the solicitor route, the private practice route, or maybe going into private industry. Then we have a really exciting um, option, which is the dual LLM in international business law. 
Um, that is only available on a full time basis. You can't do that one part time. Um, but this is an opportunity to spend one semester in the University of Lyon, University Catholique of Lyon, um, and one semester in Maynooth. So you spend the first semester in France, second semester in Ireland and Maynooth. Um, and there you get um, two degrees out of it. So you get a French master's and a Irish master's um, and you do subjects in obviously in France in the first semester and in Ireland in the second semester. Um, you don't need to be able to speak French for this. It's all done through English. Um, I think that's a really exciting master's for people who are maybe looking to sort of travel internationally or to work internationally. Um, and then finally, new for 2022-2023, we have a blended LLM in international law. Um, this is run only on a part-time basis, and it's designed to allow you to balance it with your other commitments in life. So it's blended, it's part-time, there'll be online, in-person, um, and it's really designed to, for maximum flexibility. Um, and this international law LLM um, is, again, focusing on sort of public international law, international justice type modules. So just in terms of the entry requirements to the LLMs, um, all of our LLM programs are open to law and non-law students. So don't feel that you need an undergraduate law degree to study on the LLM. Um, the only exception to that is the dual LLM degree with the Catholic University of Lyon, um, where that does require you to have an undergraduate law degree. Um, entry requirements are a 2-2 or higher in your undergraduate degree. Um, and as I said, for all of the LLM programs, um, other than the dual one, we also have postgraduate diploma options. Um, and there you do 60 credits rather than 90. Um, and you don't do a dissertation. So you'll do all the same subjects, um, you'll have the same choices, but you just don't do a dissertation. So why come and study an LLM at Maynooth? Um, and I imagine Ian is probably going to cover some of similar uh, points um, when he talks about the MA, because we really look to share across the, the programmes some of the really important aspects of being a postgraduate student. So some of these benefits are things like the placement. Uh, we offer a placement module where you can go and spend one semester, so one module, two days a week for 12 weeks working with an organization. So that could be an NGO, the private sector, we have um, government related entities, we have uh, trade unions, we have a huge list of partner organizations where we send students to get really valuable work experience during the second semester of their degree. And there's also a really wide module choice. Um, I've mentioned a couple of them, but we have a vast module choice with uh, that are all taught by you know, really experienced lecturers. So you can use this master's to really start to develop what it is you're interested in and to go down that route of picking subjects that you're really passionate about. Um, and then finally, career development. We, we like to spend quite a lot of time focusing on your career development. Um, so we have a professional development module where we go through things like CV writing, um, uh, interview skills. Um, we have talks from industry. So that's a very much a, a practical module. Uh, we also have great links with industry. Um, so for example, the funds law masters is taught by um, Matheson Law um, LLP, so a law firm in Dublin. Uh, we have a Philip Lee Islamic Finance Law Prize, so we have really strong connections with industry. Um, and similarly, we have connections and links with community and voluntary groups um, through both the teaching, but also through research opportunities and including opportunities that students can get involved in. So Maria and Gavin will probably talk a little bit more about this when we go to them, but just in terms of where our graduates go, um, it's really a, a huge variety of careers. And I think it's because an LLM gives you really solid skills and experience that you can use and apply in a variety of different careers. So things like our graduates have gone to work in law firms, business or the private sector, politics, community and social work, NGOs, academia, the civil service. It's a really long list. And, and as I said, that is because of the strong skills 
that a postgraduate law degree gives you. So um, I will hand over now to Ian, who's going to sort of go through a similar process with respect to the MA. I'll stop sharing now, Ian. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, thanks for that, Adana. I do have a few slides here <clears throat> which roughly correspond with what you were showing there. As Adana said, uh, the criminology program and the law programs share a number of modules, work very closely together, and that reflects the fact that law and criminology are very well integrated within the department, and also that the directors of all the program and Adana as director of postgraduate studies, we all work very closely together to try and maximize the uh, benefits to our students of being here. So what I'm just going to show you on a couple of slides are the modules for the Masters in Criminology. Um, I suppose initially to say in terms of the background of applicants, uh, we welcome applicants with a law background, with a criminology background, but also a range of other social sciences and humanities. So we have had people with a background in history, in sociology, social policy, social care, uh, youth work, politics, all sorts of different backgrounds. And if you uh, are wondering if your undergraduate degree or your mix of undergraduate modules would qualify you for the criminology masters, please feel free to drop me an email and I'd be happy to discuss it with you. So most of these are bespoke to the criminology masters. And what's unique about this program is its comparative nature. So every single module on this program, unlike other criminology master's programs on the island of Ireland, and also unlike most of them in neighboring jurisdictions, has a distinctly international, global, and comparative focus. So even if, say, you studied youth justice before, uh, this module will be nothing like that because you will explore youth justice systems from all over the world. The other modules include comparative penal policy, global policing. I teach this module in restorative justice. That's my main area. And I would say that all of these modules, as Dana said, are taught by people who conduct research in this area. And there's a couple of, um, I suppose, combinations of modules that make a lot of sense together. But when you are thinking about which masters you want to do and indeed which modules you want to do, I would recommend prioritizing what it is you are most interested in. So, you know, if you think you're interested in a criminology masters, but you're not sure, I'll happily talk to people as well about their other options, because there's all sorts of really good master's programs that Maynooth offers, that our undergraduate students go on to study, that people from other places do as well. And we do share with the law masters a few modules here, one of which is the dissertation. So everyone does a dissertation on the master's program. Everyone is able to apply for the placement. And I'll just point out a couple of the more, um, I suppose, criminal justice oriented placement opportunities. And everyone does professional development together, which focuses on careers, on CV writing. We have a number of careers talks and so on. The compulsory modules are professional development and dissertation, and also research methods. Everyone does research methods on the criminology masters, and everyone does comparative criminology. If you don't have a criminology background, this module, criminology and criminal justice, is also compulsory. So either you will have three or four options to choose from, depending on whether you have a criminology background. These are some of the placement organizations that are a bit more kind of criminal justice-y, or on this side anyway, Irish Penal Reform Trust, Probation Service, Inspector of Prisons, Victim Support at Court, lots of really, really interesting organizations there. And again, I would stress, this makes our master's programs really unique because while, for example, community and youth work or social work masters also have placements. Those are very practical placements. And for social science masters, you don't often see placement options like this. 
And then again, mirroring what Adana said, these are organizations that our master, recent master students now work with, Irish Penal Reform Trust, youth work organizations, people work with us as researchers and as tutors. Um, they've gone on to work for the Department of Justice, for the guards, and all sorts of other NGOs and public sector bodies as well. But what I would, again, just stress is, do the masters that interest you the most because 99% of the organizations you might work for are probably things you haven't even heard of yet. So focus really on the mass on the masters that interest you, unless, and this is important for criminology, a very small number of jobs do require a certain educational background. So if you want to be a probation worker or a social worker, you have to do the masters in social work. Similarly, if you want to be a practicing psychologist, you need to go through the clinical route. But for basically everything else in the public and third sectors, you can go and do whatever social science masters interests you the most and then apply for basically any job after that. And I'm just going to quickly take a look here if there's any other information I want to share. But I suppose one interesting or important point is that these are 12 month programs. So they, they're not September to June, like an undergrad year. They're September to September because you have two semesters of classes, but then over the summer, you do your dissertation if you do the full master's. So that's one important thing to take into account. And the other important thing is that for both the law programs and the criminology one, all the courses are on Thursdays and Fridays. There is one exception to that. One of the law modules, which is delivered by one of the lawyers, is by one of the legal practitioners, I think, is on Wednesday. But for criminology, certainly, all your taught classes are on Thursdays and Fridays. If you do the placement, that's on the other days in the second semester. But everything else is on Thursdays and Fridays. So that's for people who commute or for people who work part time and so on. And I will probably stop at that point and uh, allow Gavin and Maria to come in on that. So, Adana, do you want to ask, are you going to ask Gavin some questions and I'll ask Maria, we'll do it like that, yeah? Sure, sure. And I guess um, I can ask questions and Maria, if you want to jump in and, yeah, and vice please. versa, feel free as well. But so... Gavin, thank you very much for uh, for joining us, and you know I appreciate you have just started a, a new job, so really appreciated that you're you're taking time out today. So maybe you could just give us a little bit of background, you know, what degree you studied at undergrad and postgrad, um, and then maybe what you've gone on to do now, and then we can talk about your experience. Yeah, perfect. So I did the uh, BCL Law and Business at Minute, and then followed it up with the LLM in International Business Law. Uh, I did it part time. Uh, which is which is great for me. That flexibility was really really handy. Uh, I went on then to work for for about a year um, in the, the accounts department of a property management company, and then I found uh, the job that I'm at now. So uh, as a, as a legal and compliance consultant with um, First Derivatives, um, and of course, yeah, I think the masters definitely helped with um, getting me involved in in roles like that, um, especially the capital markets kind of side of it and the different kind of modules that you can do, uh, really really handy like that. Mm -hmm. And what, um, so what modules did you do on your, your master's? Yeah, so um, I obviously kind of did the, the, the international kind of business related ones, capital markets law, foreign investment law, public procurement law. Um, but I kind of initially had a really uh, massive interest in human rights law. So I took kind of uh, international human rights law, um, economic, social and cultural rights. Uh, I actually did my dissertation uh, on the, the UN Security Council as well. Uh, so that flexibility is great that, you know, you can pick stuff you have an interest in while also working towards the masters that, that, that you want. Um, Absolutely, and do you think that's something that, you know, you would recommend as a, a for doing a masters is that it gives you that kind of opportunity to explore different things that, you know, and, and see where your interests lie? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you're kind of working with smaller class sizes as well. So what I found is that, you know, I would have been way more involved at the master's level than I would have been at the undergraduate level. You kind of develop that kind of independent learning and finding your own kind of niches and stuff that you're kind of interested in as well. Um, and I suppose it does give you that edge as well when you do go looking at the kind of jobs market, when you do go applying for graduate programs and stuff, you do have that little bit kind of extra education, that, that extra kind of research ability that you pick up in the master's. Great. Um, and if you were in our, the, the people who are at this webinar, um, potential students, if you were in their shoes, was there any advice that you wish you had had, you know, when you were thinking about applying for a master's? 
Um, I suppose just, uh, you know, if you want to do it, uh, kind of go for it. And there is that kind of flexibility. If, you know, you can do a part-time, which was handy for me, you can kind of spread out paying for it over two years. If you're kind of worried about the kind of workload or, or you're working as well on top of it, uh, it does make it many are much more manageable to do it kind of part-time. And um, so, yeah, that'd be my advice anyway. Great. All right. Well, perfect. Well, I might hand over to Maria and then we can maybe come back, circle back if we have any time at the end. Perfect. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Sadana. Thanks, Gavin. Maria, tell us a little bit about your experience of the Criminology Masters. Um, so... Oh, wait a sec. Wait a sec. It's just not coming through great, actually. Do, do you want to try turning your camera off, Maria, and see if that comes through a bit better? Just the background, so I studied in Manus and I did um, criminology and sociology. Maria, can you hear me okay? Okay, I am going to call Maria and put her on loudspeaker. All right, can you hear me now? I changed, um, can you hear me any better now? Uh, oh yeah, no, that's coming through a bit better. Yeah, let's let's try that again. I was just gonna call you there, but let's try that again. So go, go ahead. So tell us about, you're saying your background and then your experience of the masters. Sorry, yeah, so um, my ba background was criminology and sociology um, through the arts program. And then I decided to do the masters in um, comparative criminology and criminal justice. And um, I find it really enjoyable. I think kind of touching on what other people had said, like the modules, there's such an array of modules. I had kind of studied the state responses um, to historical violence. And um, there was restorative justice modules, comparative penal policy, and there's really loads of options. And one thing that was really interesting was obviously the international context. Um, Cause that was really interesting. As Ian said, there was some modules that might've overlapped with undergrad, but it was completely different because of the international context. Um, and also what was really great is what I think this master's gives you is kind of the freedom. So even in, within the modules, so within the restorative justice module, um, you know, we looked at the benefits and challenges of restorative justice and you could pick an example of where you wanted to go with that. And um, same within the penal policy module, you picked your penal policy that you wanted to base your assignment on. And then of course the dissertation. So while, you know, and it really kind of helps you narrow down then what kind of field you'd like to go into. So even though there is set modules, you really have freedom within those. And I'd say, you know, you know, you have loads of modules there, which really, you know, you're, you can help you with any job you'd like to get, but you also gain a lot of skills that would be helpful in a job. So, you know, you gain a lot of research skills, obviously from undertaking your own research. And um, the research methods module was, you know, unbelievably helpful in that sense and kind of as Gavin was saying as well you know kind of different to undergrad there's a lot of emphasis on you know you get a lot of oral presentation skills you know different modules have presentations to give and also because the classes are smaller there is that chance to kind of get involved in discussion and due to all the different backgrounds like history sociology social work criminology there is really good discussions within the class and I would kind of advise people, even if, you know, right now that kind of takes you back if you don't like the kind of, you know, getting involved in discussion, like it really does build your confidence and it really is just, you know, great for future as well. So they're kind of the main things I'd say. And just as well with the professional development module. So that kind of goes beyond and um, we linked in with law with that. And that was really helpful as well, because it kind of, as Ian said, there's so many careers that even I wasn't aware of when I started. So it's great to kind of get the information and find out what past students had done, even if they hadn't gone in a criminology way and um, there was different talks from them. So learn what jobs you can do and also the array of modules that are available. Yeah, that's interesting because, and you're saying there um, that you can, you know, really pick the thing that you're interested in and do it in all of your modules. Cause I suppose in, for your dissertation and for my module and some of the other ones you were doing kind of gender-based violence stuff, but that was because the assessments give you the flexibility to pick the topic that you're really interested in, right? 
Yeah, so um, for my dissertation, I kind of focused on female offenders and kind of creating an effective response to female offenders. And, you know, that was completely kind of my idea. Like I know some masters is a list of topics and, you know, I've, I do know people who, you know, they kind of don't like that structure and you have your freedom and then you are matched with a supervisor who would like, you know, kind of closest to the topic. So you really do have your freedom there. You have your freedom how you'd like to research it, obviously within the boundaries of what's available. So within penal policy, I kind of looked at um, female under responses to female offenders in England and Wales. So that kind of linked in. And then obviously for the side of justice module, I kind of looked at the benefits and challenges of using it with sexual violence. So, you know, I kind of that the field I'd like to maybe continue in as in the future I think I would like to pursue a PhD in the realm of female offenders and responses and kind of gaining an understanding of all these different aspects from the assignments allowing me to do that really helped with that. And you know this may or may not be a good thing but you've not been able to get rid of us since then if I uh, uh, understand correctly because you stayed on with us as a research assistant you're a tutor now and public working on publications and a PhD so tell us about some of that. And um, yeah so this semester now I'm doing and um, some tutoring for the white collar crime module so it's a new module at the moment and and that's really good and it's nice to see kind of different modules that um, are kind of coming through the department um, and a lot of the skills I learned as I said you know the public speaking so we had a lot of presentations and the group discussion that has 100% helped me with the tutoring and I suppose that's for any job as well where you have the public speaking. It really kind of improved writing one of the areas of oriental resources and It's cutting out for me a little bit there, guys. Is it the same for you? Well, well, just I'll just ask if um, if you can hear me, Maria. Just one more question, uh, the same one that Gavin had last. Was a good one. Just any advice you'd give to people looking at masters or thinking about applying. Okay, maybe I'll, oh yeah, go ahead. No, I can't hear you now for some, oh, that, there we go, there we go. So it's just different ways that has um, improved my skills since the, um, and it's working. Can you, yeah, and we give, just as I was saying, as um, don't kind of be thrown back from the public speaking and the discussion part of it, because it really is really helpful. And, you know, kind of focus on um, some of the modules that you really think that you are interested in. And as I said, even if, you kind of feel like some of your topics because none of the modules actually focused on female offenders if that makes sense but I still kind of had the chance to explore that so even if you see that there's a topic you're really interested in and it might not be like you know really you know seen there you know you still have the chance to look into that so I would definitely recommend it and as you said you know you don't need the criminology background so I would definitely recommend it to anyone who was interested. Excellent thank you so much Maria really appreciate that. I wonder then if there's any questions from anyone in the audience. I believe you can um, raise your hands or type. Oh, no, that's just for us, maybe. But you can type any questions into the Q&A uh, chat function there, if anyone has any. But of course, you are welcome to email Adana or I at any time with any questions about any of these courses. And I would just say, have a look at the um, so the, the the page for each of the different programs. It has lots of information like deadlines and um, you know uh, requirements to get onto it, the, each of the programs. So I would say, have a look there because they are actually really helpful. Um, the, the sort of different, uh, the, the pages for each of the different programs. And I think we're just at the 20 past, unless yeah. there's any questions. Any questions, anyone? Oh, we've got something coming in here. Yes, yeah, so second class honors grade two is a two two. Yeah, that's exactly right. Thanks, Emma. Okay. And something else coming, oh no, that's just, thank you. No, no problem at all. So Roxanne, will we hand over to you? 
Yeah. So if we have no further questions, what I can do is I will stop our recording.